Joining me now is Senator Amy Klobuchar, Democrat from Minnesota and a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Senator, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for being well, with us. So you. now you've got Lisa Murkowski, uh, Susan Collins, and Mitt Romney all supporting Judge Jackson. Just how important is that to you, Democratic members of the that evenly divided Judiciary Committee, I should point out? You were 11 to 11 in reporting it out. <laughs> Well, first, I appreciate their courage. These are thoughtful senators that have worked with us on infrastructure, so many things. Secondly, I think they saw in Judge Jackson what we uh, all saw. This woman with incredible legal acumen, um, incredible ability to um, understand that the law is not just words on a page, but that every single opinion impacts real people. And how she showed that grace under pressure when she got hit upon and attacked, and she was just sitting there looking strong. And I think they also saw something else, which we all realized after the hearing. Because of that grace under pressure, because of that historic moment, many polls showed that something like 66 percent, two-thirds of the American people, thought she belonged on the bench. Um, and so I am very, very honored to be part of this committee and excited about that moment when Judge Jackson, no matter what attacks were lodged against her, she stood tall and she is going to walk into that courthouse with her head held high and every little girl and boy in America is going to know anything and everything is possible as the first black woman will be in the room where it happens in the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, just to get through a little bit of the details that are coming up, Steve Breyer, Justice Breyer, is going to complete his term. So he has announced his retirement at the end of the term, which is usually the end of June, beginning of July. And then she will actually be sworn in as a Supreme Court justice in October when they return in the fall, correct? Uh, yes. And the other thing about this is that, though, the vote, we're not going to wait. I wonder why we wouldn't want to wait till then for the vote, Andrea. <laughs> The vote is going to be this week. Um, and as you note, it's now 53 to 47. There's not a lot of drama. That's great to not have drama in the U.S. Senate when it's 50-50. We won't need a tie-breaking vote from my friend, the vice president. And so in any case, that vote will be on Thursday or Friday, uh, the sooner the better. Um, and then um, it sets the stage for her to walk into that courthouse. Uh we did hear Senator Durbin, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, uh, you know, criticizing the process. Certainly, you heard from Mitt Romney and from Lisa Murkowski criticizing both sides. I mean, this goes all the way back to Judge Bork, who did not get on the court, certainly Clarence Thomas, who did get on the court, a lot of other issues involved now with Clarence Thomas and his wife, Ginny. Um, do you think it can ever get to the, the stage where a Supreme Court nomination, no matter how qualified the judge might be, is actually dealt with in a constructive way and people can, you know, finally bury the hatchet and not be fighting last, last year's war. I do. I hope so. And let me tell you that some of these nominees uh, have come in the most extraordinary circumstances where the seat was held open, this nomination was rammed through in the case of uh, Mitch McConnell and Amy Coney Barrett. Um, those were very unique circumstances, let's face it. And right now, we have a number of members, even those that voted, some of them that voted against her on the Judiciary Committee, like Senator Grassley, um, who allowed the process to move forward um, and didn't put up any procedural block, roadblocks, um, did show some civic ability to handle a nomination process. So that is my hope. We obviously have a number of members on that committee, especially, uh, who are trying to score points and unfairly attacked her. And I think every uh, member on the Democratic side uh, did a very good job in our own ways of pushing back on the facts. Only 3 percent of her opinions, Andrea, uh, were reversed. Only 3 percent. Um, and you look at how her uh, rulings stand up for the test of time. You look at Republican-appointed judges who've done very similar things in cases. You look at her support from the Fraternal Order of Police and her brother, a police officer, her, a public defender. Uh, it just adds up to someone that's got the balance that we need uh, for a Supreme Court justice. 
Uh, you and uh, Senator Blunt were also in charge of those, some of the January 6th hearings on the Senate side. You chaired the committee. Uh, now the January 6th House committee, the Select Committee, is going to hear from you, uh, Ivanka Trump. Uh, this is mm -hmm. getting very much closer to the former president. Your takeaway uh, is how well, they've been getting, trying to yes, narrow the circle. Um, I think that and of course, Senator Blunt and I and Senator Peters and Portman shared a different piece of this, and that was the security needs of the U.S. Capitol and what right. went wrong when it came to the defense of the Capitol, which was very, very important to do immediately, and that was a bipartisan uh, report. I am really impressed by the fact that you have uh, two Republicans involved in this, including, of course, Liz Cheney, um, and that the House is moving ahead on looking at something else, and that is uh, the deeper story of what went on here um, and what the White House was doing and who was involved in funding this um, and how this occurred, that we literally had an insurrection, an attempt to overtake uh, the capital of the United States and overturn an election. That is a big, big deal. And I am glad that they are doing such a thorough investigation and looking forward uh, to their report and what they have already uncovered. Senator Amy Globuchar, thank you very much. Uh, Thanks, a big day coming there. up this week. Thank you. The confirmation. Thank you.